So today we are redoing the creek in our front yard. It's gonna be a slightly more complex build, so it's gonna take a little more effort and a little bit more money, but in the end it's gonna look really good. If you saw my video about this one specifically, you've seen how simple and easy and cheap it can be to make one of these creeks, and they're very simple. But today we're trying to expand add a few more layers to it, a little more detail, and it's gonna be a bigger project. So first things first, we're gonna rip this out and scrap the supplies, separate them out and pile them up so that we know what we have. And then we're going to start digging out for the new one. So the log here was actually cut down off the corner of our house here a couple weeks ago. So we've laid it here at the bottom where the pond is gonna be to hold the soil up. And I sort of expect it to rot. We're gonna plant over the top of it and if it erodes over time, that's fine. We're gonna reinforce it with soil. You're not really gonna be able to see it much, at least not from our house. But it's helping us raise the level of the soil down here so that we can put a pond in. It's gonna come over to this side of our yard, and we're gonna have a larger pond at the top here. It's gonna spill out into the river, go down under a bridge, down to our bigger pond at the bottom. So since we're using multiple pieces of liner, we're gonna step the creek down every time we get to a new piece of liner so that the water doesn't flow back up under the piece of liner above it. So this liner ends here. We're gonna dig a step down for the next piece of liner so that the water constantly waterfalls onto the new liner. And again, we don't get any backflow. All right, so now that we've got our trench dug and sort of light out like a rough grade, we're gonna lay the rest of this liner out and pump water from the top to see how the water flows so that we can know what adjustments we need to make to the trench. So for reference, this is bad. It's like level here. Almost guarantee the water is gonna flow back up under this liner and leak right here. That, however, is pretty good because the water here is not higher than the step it's coming off of. So I'm gonna have to do a little digging here to fix this joint here. And then we can probably start setting in rock. Okay, so the liner is looking good, the water is flowing well, and I think we're ready to set in rock. And here's where this one is gonna get a little more technical than the last one. So with these step downs in the creek, we're gonna turn these into rapids or waterfalls depending on the shape of the rock. This one's gonna be more of a rapid because these rocks are rounder. But as they're sitting now, the water's always gonna go underneath them and it won't go over the top very much. So to keep the water from going underneath, we're gonna fill in back here with an expanding insulation foam to force the water to flow over the top and that will get covered with the river rock so you won't ever see that. So they actually sell and market this stuff specifically for ponds. You can look it up on the internet and I've, that's where I've found it easiest. But it's actually double the price of the alternative which is just house expanding insulation foam. In my experience it's practically the same thing. The only difference is this stuff is like a white or bright yellow and the water feature stuff is like dark gray or black so it blends in better. But for this purpose we're going to be using it in places where we won't see it. So I don't care if it's yellow, you won't ever find it. So we're going to use this to fill in under these rocks on all of our little rapids and waterfalls to fill in so that the water has to go over the top. Now I would not use this to seal the water feature itself 
We're not using this under the pond liner because it's not perfectly watertight. Its best use is just to direct water flow within the water feature where you want it to go. While the foam's drying, I'm gonna dig the trench I need for the water line from the top down. So I'm gonna be digging another trench for that. So once this is dried, you're gonna carefully, without hitting the liner, shave off the excess low enough that when you throw your river rock in, it covers it. So we're just gonna cut these pieces out here so that they don't show. If they're big clumps, sometimes you can just rip them out. If I give it a little cut, tear it out, make sure it's not visible. But make sure not to pull it out of the hole it's filling because you want it to stay in the hole there. And then throw it away. Okay, so it's a new day. We left this running overnight. So it's been going nonstop for about 18 to 20 hours and the water level in the pond at the bottom has not dropped at all. So as it sits, we don't have any leaks, which is perfect. So now I feel confident enough to go through and cut the liner back closer to where the water level is and fill in the rest of the rock. All right, so now that I've got the bridge in, the project is done. Yesterday I went and I bought some water plants and I stuck them at the top and the bottom. Today I'm gonna go grab some fish for the pond at the bottom. The water feature is done. I'm gonna get my drone out and use my cameras to get some final shots of the whole thing so you guys can see what it looks like. Thank you. 
So there you have it. That is how you build a creek water feature with a recirculating submersible fountain pump. I'm super happy with how this project turned out. This is my wife's new favorite spot to sit is up front by the fountain here. So let me know what you guys think of this project. Ask any questions you want in the comments down below. And if you have any suggestions for cool projects you wanna see or water feature ideas, let me know and I will see what I can do about it. Thanks for watching and following along and hit that like button, subscribe for more videos. We'll catch you guys in the next one, peace.